This is my family's Seder plate. Uh, my wife Amy and I received this as a gift for our wedding nine years ago. And when the sun sets on Friday, April 6th, not only will we celebrate Shabbat, our weekly time to rejuvenate, but also we're going to pull this baby out to begin our Passover Seder. Filled with maror, chazeret, charoset, karpas, a roasted lamb bone, and an egg, each of these designated areas symbolizes an aspect of our people's greatest story. One of redemption, one of renewal, and one of hope. Now using the Haggadah as a guide, and I have a few here. When, when I was a kid, I actually used the Maxwell House Haggadah, and I still think my family uses it today. But this one, and it always gives me, a di it's a different night by Noam Zion, uh, Zion and David Dishon. And I, I always get a, um, a great feeling when I bring this out because I had the great opportunity to actually coach uh, Noam Zion's son uh, in baseball when I lived in Jerusalem for my first year of rabbinical school. Uh, he was, I believe, 13, 14, or 15 at the time. It was, it was in that capacity. We were a great team. I think we won the Jerusalem championship as well. Actually, I don't think. I know. But either way, this is a great Haggadah to use. Another one, a family Haggadah, uh, which is a very nice compliment to anyone's Seder. And uh, another one I have uh, is a Passover Haggadah um, done by the Central Conference of American Rabbis, uh, which is another great one to, to use. There's so many different ones uh, and so many different ones that each of you might be using this Passover season. But again, this is just a guide. Um, our goal at this time is not to just recite the words verbatim, but to, but to put ourselves personally into the narrative through our own stories of hardship, of liberation, and faith, which have happened to us over this past year. Now, on four occasions within our Torah, parents are told on Passover that they are to teach this story to their children. Now, according to our rabbis, these four instances allude to four separate children, the wise, the rebellious, the simple, and the silent. Now, during our Seder, each child poses a question, and each receives a different, biblically-inspired answer. Yet this categorization of students, whether a child or an adult, is merely wise or rebellious or simple or silent, is, I believe, extraordinarily problematic. Instead, this rabbinic midrash, this expounding of our Torah's words, seems to be better interpreted to be character traits that each of us possess. Our goal is to recognize when our wisdom leads to intellectual enhancement or arrogance. Be aware of when our rebelliousness ushers in lawlessness or much needed innovation or activism against great social wrongs. Be cognizant of when our simple mindedness is due to immaturity or humbleness and be willing to acknowledge whether our silence will lead to social ills or allow for greater acceptance and tolerance within our society. So this Passover, as we share our people's greatest story, may we be proactive in working together to find balance between our wise and our rebellious and our simple and our silent aspects so that the hope for redemption and renewal in our lives and in our world may become a reality. Happy Passover, and may we do this again next year in Jerusalem.